seen this guy on Comedy Central. He's had a special. He was on Live at Gotham. He was on Important Things with Dimitri Martin. He's the voice of the zombie on Ugly Americans. He was on Best Week Ever. He's all over the place. And he's fucking here. Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Metzger. Wait, wait, who, what was he talking about, Peter Black? Uh, whose tits did he want to talk about? <laughs> you don't have to be black to do that. You can just talk about tits if you want. <laughs> Look at them things. I... <laughs> are we? <laughs> really? What's your name? What's your name? Oh. Um, I don't... I get a lot of Facebooks. I'm not that cool, but I do... I don't keep track. I get high a lot. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm not the best for just people I met in person, remembering them, let alone my Facebooks. But thank you for coming. Uh, how about from Monroe Martin one more time, though? No. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. You are his best tie and sneakers for this. That's it. You know? We, you know why he's doing that? Because we have a, a friend, this comic, Keith told him he has to start dressing better, because normally he just wears like a sweat. Like, he, he walks around like Trayvon Martin most of the time. <laughs> I'm not, like, just for his own safety, he needs to, you know. He's a much larger target. Like, I, I want him to, you know, dress better, but he apparently took that to mean that he needs to look like the manager of a Wendy's. I right mean, <laughs> like, just wear a shirt, a t-shirt, dude. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm really glad to do this in Philly, my little practice hour. Because Philly's a good town to play in, man, it really is. You know? And to visit. Because New York is a little too intense for me. So it's just intense. It's just, you know, I didn't appreciate Philly as much as I should when I lived just like the cheap ass rent and the space you have for that. New York is just this thousands of dollars for all the time this close. All the time. This is like my taxi driver years now of living here. Like, you just, this is how close it is. Sometimes you wake up and there'll just be like a black dip just mush right in your face. <laughs> like first thing. Like, oh my God. Is this really $2,600? Can I this guy's purple dork mash into my eyelid? Like, I mean, I'm exaggerating that a little bit, okay? It's not exactly like that. You, it, that doesn't just come with your apartment. Like, to ask for that. <laughs> ain't gonna be no 2600 a month either. That's $3,000 easy if you want black to get the face. <laughs> yeah, it's too much. And I get traumatized every day. That I'm making up, but this this is to this totally happened to me. I still have kind of PTSD from. I, 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 I come out of the subway at 80th Street. There's a, uh, a homeless guy. He's, he's laying against on the floor with his head just propped up on the wall, okay? Like really, like the kind of homeless that like you really only hear about jokes. Like you don't really see the news. Like if somebody tells you a story about this guy, you know? You get problems, we'll put it that way. And uh, there's two lines of people walking in and out, just walking right by him, like he's not even there. Like he's not even a person. You know? Like, they just don't even acknowledge, and it struck me, like, you get numb to homelessness in New York because there's so much of it, but just this scene of these people walking by this guy, like, he's just nothing, like, it got to me. And I was like, you know what, when I get up there, I'm gonna, uh, make eye contact. <laughs> I'm not gonna give him any money or nothing, but... I <laughs> I'm gonna make meaningful eye contact with him. That's probably valuable to a guy laying on the floor, right? Mm. I'm gonna take that with you. Yeah. So, uh, I'm walking up, and I get closer to him. I see that, uh, his pants are kind of, like, down past his ass. And, uh, his arm is, is pumping pretty hard, like, really, like, I didn't see that when I first, you know, was judging the other people for not wanting to look at him, I didn't see his arm going like that, and, uh, I get up close and I follow the arm down, just like a horror movie, and he had most, rough estimate, most of his hand up his ass, 
Yeah, he was fisting himself. He was laying in the subway, openly, not even like sexual, like, kind of like frantic, like, like let's say you couldn't find your keys in your ass, how you look for them. Do I not have my keys? Yeah. He was going to town. And, uh, and then we made eye contact. Meaningful, meaningful eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. Fist himself. Did you think I was going to say he was masturbating? Is that what you thought that was going to be? You think it was headed to a mere jerking off? Oh, country mouse. No. <laughs> this isn't your quaint Pennsylvania train hobos who's riding the rails and jerking off once in a while. It's New York fucking city. They fist themselves, man. Just tearing into his own ass like he was a croissant. My goodness, man. My goodness. <laughs> Who looked away first? He did. He did. You better believe he did. Get back out of that once you finish him. Hey, you're human. Let's fuck you. <laughs> yeah, so. That's a, that's, probably, that's a terrible story. Just, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to open all my shows, you know? I mean, usually I make it weird up front. Like a couple months ago, I get on. This is so awkward. I get on, I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? Doesn't seem like a mean thing to say, right? I go, what's up, dude, to a guy where you are, kinda. And uh, and he looked upset. And I'm like, and I looked at him better. And I realized it was a lesbian dude. It was not. It was a woman. She just like had her like her shirt buttoned up to the top button. And like, hair, like I, sh I should have no realized it, you know? But I just had a light in my eyes. I wasn't, I'm not mean, you know? I wasn't like, I would just get on the stage, hey, dude face, what are you, some kind of lesbian? Don't do that. I'm not that kind of guy. So, I'm trying to apologize. Two seconds on him, I have to apologize now. I'm like, man, I am so sorry. I have a light in my eyes, okay? That's not, I, I'm not making a lesbian joke at you. I know the difference between a man and a lesbian, believe me. I believe you. I've been in New York a long time. I know every, you know, from your John Waynes to your Rick Moranises, I know every, every variety. And uh, in like this really sad voice, she goes, but I am a man. Because it was a man. It wasn't, it wasn't a lesbian. I was writing my first guess. It was a, a lesbian. Just a very hurt looking man. It's the worst I've ever hurt a person's feelings in my whole life. But trying to, I couldn't hurt somebody just as bad as if I just look at you. I don't know if you're a man, then a woman, then a man. Like, that, that guy probably killed himself, honestly. That's what people do now. That, he, he probably, you know, that's analog bullying. That's what they, that's classic. Yeah, in person. I want to be like that, because it's a lot more sensitive now, you know. This is another good thing about Philly, like your hipsters are a lot more tolerable here. And then your tattoo and nerd glasses people, I can stomach them so much, so much easier than like broke dude. It's just so annoying, man. And you, just every day I come out of my building, I see a grown man wearing Audrey Hepburn jeans. And, you know, I had one guy, another guy I made it weird with immediately. He was sitting in the front and he had like a little sea captain hat like to the side. For straight reasons, for straight picking up girl reasons, he had a jaunty little cat and a, uh, like a, the whole get up of a, of a captain, okay? And he's with this girl he's trying to impress, that's what it's for. And uh, so I just said something to him and then immediately I'm like the jock now of this show, you know, I'm, I'm a bully to him. You're just like right in front, I just can't take anything if I just, you, you look like you came in on a hot air balloon. And, and I, it's just gonna stick in my head if I, you know? I'm not trying to judge anybody for how they dress. I don't know how to dress, dude, okay? I, like, you know, I understand there's, you gotta dress a certain way to bang a certain kind of pussy. I understand how that works. <laughs> you know? You're trying to get a girl that dresses like the world's youngest grandma, you don't just <laughs> show up how you want. You gotta, 
Nobody wants a sleeve tattoo. Nobody wants that. You know, that how does that feel as an adult to have that? The most mediocre life choice. Like, it's like you have an Ed Hardy shirt that you can never take off. And you can't, you can't even, like, look at them, you know what I mean? Because, like, eye contact is, like, bullying to them. <laughs> like, please, just look at my tattoo and I'll tell you right now. You know? Because all these kids kill themselves. It's a lot of that now, man. Right? They, kids, because their computers are very mean to them now. It's not, uh... Not like when I was young, but I didn't have, uh... <laughs> I didn't have a computer in my room. I didn't have that. You know? I had to walk, like, three miles to school every day. Just to get called a fag, basically. <laughs> I have a magic box in my room to answer all the questions in the universe and call me and call me a fag. We didn't have that kind of technology. Yeah, that's why I call a lot because I didn't, I wasn't into sports. So when I'm from New Jersey, that means you, they automatically that's what you're called. And I didn't particularly care for it either. I don't know if like people think it's more fun to be called a fag if you're not gay, but I feel like it's less fun. In certain ways. <laughs> I swear to God, I wish I wish I liked either cock or football. Honestly, God, I feel a Super Bowl comes around, I feel really left out. There's like no points. If I go to a Super Bowl party or a gay orgy, it's going to be the same, the same like exclusion. And I'm just going to be off in the side room eating chips and dip while I hear a bunch of real men grunting and cheering. It's all, I don't know if you notice this, it's all white nerds that kill themselves. Do you know, they're all white. You don't really see, uh, you don't see black nerds killing themselves. You don't see, you don't see that. Because, uh, let's face it, they don't get those kind of opportunities of white nerds to have a home computer to press them. Black nerds don't get, black nerds get shot by gangs and neighborhood watch and shit. That's how black nerds are. I don't have time. That's how that, Ever you watch like your local news here in Philly? You said every night, tragedy in the part that you don't go to. And then they got a kid with a graduation hat, like, you're like, you shot that guy again? <laughs> every time a gang shoots at another gang, they miss and hit a promising black nerd on his way to beat something. Without fail! Do you know, you're that guy, uh, uh, uh the astronomy guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's like on every science, he's like the king of astronomy on science shows. You know what I'm talking about, right? He's great. Do you have any idea how many people he must have had to stab just to make it out of wherever he's from to tell you about his love of planets and shit? Listen, if you're black and you got a scholarship, my advice is buy a vest. And just like lay low for a little bit until the scholarship shit blows over because I got like Urkel seeking bullets now that punch you down reading a book. Yeah. I got my own problems though, dude. I just got a uh, I just got a $200 ticket from San Diego. $200 for jaywalking. <laughs> for jaywalking. Yeah, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? You ever have a cop pull you over walking to write you a jaywalking ticket? <laughs> in Philadelphia or New York ever one time? No, never! Because they have shit to do. They have to stop and frisk every black man who ever lived. They don't have time to bother me with my minor white jaywalkings. Yeah, walking down the street. This, this pig just pulls me over while I'm on foot. This oinker. I'm getting upset. Yeah. It's like the N word of cops that I'm using. And I shouldn't, you know? That's really not. Because he's just doing his job, right? That's how you're supposed to take that. The guy's just, he's just following orders, right? Like, a, uh, like an Auschwitz guard. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a Nazi concentration camp. Not like that, sorry. That's not. Uh, that was really. That was way too far with that. 
I don't see it. I'm just mad about that ticket. Like, like I'm overshooting it with that the whole Nazi thing, though. A little bit, you know. Like, my ticket and the Holocaust are not. <laughs> they're not analogous. I'm not. You know, it's an unfair comparison, and I apologize. Because you know what? Let's face it. Not even Hitler would charge a guy two hundred dollars. Christianity not to charge $200. I've seen every Hitler show on the History Channel. That guy committed every crime you could commit as a human, except overcharging for jaywalking. That's the one thing he forgot. So congratulations, San Diego, on finishing the work of Hitler. That is more than I'm being for I don't see one problem with that. I'm sorry. This is my problem. And also, this got big. I just lost my iPad. Yeah. Yeah. First world problem. Is that? Is that with that sarcastic, sarcastic? First world problem. People love to yell that shit at you now, don't they? When you tell them you lose your iPad. First world problem. Like, I'm a dick because I have the problems I would have as someone who lives in America. Like, what problems am I supposed to have here? Do you have third world problems? Maybe you should get your shit together. Stop judging me. <laughs> oh, you, what, do you have America problems? You don't even have worms living in your scrotum? And you're... My whole family died of diarrhea, so... If you saw the third world shit I had to do to get that iPad, you'd watch a goddamn mouth, by the way. I live in New York like I make iPads for a living, that's how bad. Yeah, but uh, I lost it uh, the day before Steve Jobs died. I'll never forget because I didn't, it was, it was gone and he was dead and I didn't know what was happening. I, I thought at first that it was like an iPad rapture. He was just taking all the iPads. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know, turtleneck heaven? Where do you think he went? I was very surprised my iPad got there. I'll be honest, there was a lot of pornography on that iPad. I didn't think it would make it to heaven, but... It turns out that it didn't. I was drunk and left in the cab. That's what it was. That's what really happened. But I was, I mean, I was really upset. I was screaming. I was screaming at the top of my lungs like a girl. So I lost, I just left it somewhere. And uh, I mean, how do you describe that kind of screaming, honestly? Besides first world problem, I guess. Was, uh, like, it was like I was from Afghanistan and I heard that a Quran got accidentally burned. And then like, I saw a YouTube video that I didn't like. Like that upset. Okay? Like, I get it now. Now that I lost an iPad, I get that kind of, you know? I didn't used to understand that, but I know now, man. Imagine that, dude. Imagine you're from Afghanistan, okay? You're a Pashtun tribesman. Uh, you, you're very poor. It's hot all goddamn day. There's no jobs except, uh, you know, growing a beard and standing next to rubble, from what I can see. Uh, Every time you're happy or sad, you have to shoot an AK-47 in the air. That's like your only means of expressing yourself. It ain't fun, okay? Then you get this bad Koran news. And then, okay, imagine that just happened to you. And then right at that moment, someone shows you an episode of Toddlers and Tiaras. Right as you hear about those Korans and you're about to go ape shit. You're like, but hold on, take a look at this. And you're like, <laughs> There's these little painted up girls with their hair out dancing like whores. That's like two girls, one cup from Egypt, you know? Oh, what? Ah! 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 Yeah. Did you watch that show? Did you see the girl? Uh, I just ignored your answer. <laughs> We said this, this one mom, this one mom might lose custody of her daughter. She's five, and the mom dressed her up in big fake breasts and for like a dolly part. She gave her dolly part. 
how important it is. And a big ass, like a fake prosthetic like ass. This five year old, she came out and did like a, a, a booty dance. And she might lose custody. Which I don't think that's fair. I think that lady's a genius. My son, honestly, that's, that's one of those genius pageant things I ever heard. What, what better way to hide your child from a pedophile than to dress them up in big fake woman tits? It's amazing. Like, I'll bet every pedophile in that pageant left in disgust. <laughs> what is that? A grown woman? Let's get out of here. Let's just go to the park. Right? This is disgusting. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, people got killed for those Korans, though. And that video that's out, somebody's gotta die every time. Somebody's gotta die for that, really? Somebody's gotta lose their life because a Koran was damaged or your feelings were hurt? It was an iPad, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, third world problem. <laughs> I lost an iPad. Like, there's a thing called perspective, okay? I lost a very expensive iPad, okay? How hard is it to replace your Quran? I mean, honestly. And I'm not trying to say if it's good or bad or anything like that, okay? I don't want to be killed with a curvy sword after the show. I'm saying, if you need a new Quran, what are the difficulties in making that happen for yourself? You know? It's not like uh, every year a new Koran comes out and it's $600. And, uh, you gotta wait your line for it and there's angry birds. It's not like that. And then when you do buy it, you find out there's a much better Koran coming out tomorrow that they didn't even tell you about at the store. It's got like double the virgins and a much nicer camera and everything. It's the camera you were waiting for. That doesn't happen to anybody. <laughs> My iPad had a Koran on it. That's how amazing the iPad is. I read the entire Koran. <laughs> yeah, it's not that long. It's, it's pretty short. Like, people over there burn. Like, you always burn our flag. I don't understand when people try to burn the flag to get at us. You know? I mean, it's like, I get, you could burn the flag if you want, I guess. I don't, you know, there's gonna be a law against it. I don't know what you think you're accomplishing. You're not, like, we have plenty of flags. Like, really, man, like, we're not. You're, you're probably just clearing up old flags for some much needed flag making jobs. You know what I mean? I'm not even counting, like, sweatsuits and my American flag underwear that I have at home. Which, by the way, when I'm wearing my American flag underpants, is it legal to shit my pants? Like, is there, does anybody know about constitutional shitting? But on the other hand, people are kind of unfair to Muslims now, I think, in a lot of ways. Here's, here's one way that people are unfair to Muslims. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Ground Zero Mosque. In New York, there's a big controversy. They were going to build a mosque at Ground. It was just kind of near there. Like, they made it sound like they were building a mosque on the fucking hole. With the twin That's how it was described to me. They're building a mosque on top of the Twin Towers. I was like, really? Oh my god. That project really got away from us. Like, you know what? Actually, I really done something in that space. That's kind of our bad, we didn't really... But that, I wasn't upset by that in the least, okay? And by the way, it was up to me. I would put a mosque on every important building that we have. Uh, just for protection, you know? Like, it's, not, it's not hard to think your way out of the block, guys. It would uh, not be a bigot for five seconds. You know, fighting terrorists is like fighting vampires. There's a certain internal logic that you have to fight. <laughs> Like, really garlic will ward off a blood that's in the empire. Just garlic. Like, yes, dude, that's their culture. That... Don't embarrass me in front of these vampires. Oh, and we should call all of our planes mosques from now on. That's my other... It's a two-part plan. You know. Imagine that. A beautiful, safe sky mosque. You already got your shoes off when you go in. Like... 
That's really the hard part of security, is putting your shoes back on, not taking them off. It would be a sin to blow up a sky mosque with all those precious Korans on board and what have you. <laughs> Do I look Jewish, by the way? Talking all this... What, you think Jew? What do you say? Look into my nose and eyebrows and you tell me... Tell me what you think you're looking at. Maybe is right, but no, I'm not. That's a good guess. Maybe I'm not. I'm not Jewish at uh, Well, my girl's Israeli, which is like a huge... Like, her parents are furious about that, you know, which is ridiculous, because I'm like, just tell them I'm Jewish. I get passed for Jewish, you know? It's so easy to fix the situation. Like, when you're 15 years old, use your head for two seconds. Yeah! Pull your teenage head out of your autistic ass for five, five seconds. And think. Quit staring at the floor. That's why I have to say this. That's a, that's a joke. That, guys, that's a joke, okay? But autism, huh? It's not, there's a lot of autism, isn't there? Yeah. Where do you think it comes from? My mom thinks it's vaccinations because she saw MTV scientist Jenny McCarthy one time. <laughs> Tell her that on the show. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Jenny McCarthy doesn't even say that now. Do you know that? To her credit, she went back on that because it turned out her son is not autistic. Uh, he was just half Canadian and <laughs> you know, it looks similar, but it's not autism. <laughs> My mom's like, where did all this autism come from then? There was no autism when I was a kid in school. And uh, that's because when she was in school, and also when I was in school, they didn't know how to diagnose autism properly, okay? Remember that? They used to be, uh, they used to just call those kids nerds when I was in school. <laughs> Do you remember that? There was like a lot more nerds. And way less autistic kids. And, and, and they're like all autistic, like, because someone figured out you have to treat those kids, you know? Instead of just wailing dodgeballs at them. <laughs> That's all, that was the original treatment for childhood autism. You know how lucky you are if you're autistic now? Not 20 years ago? The crazy gym to you. Duh! This kid is not dodging. Just counting the balls, like... You know... Doctor, I think you might be a nerd medically. <laughs> it's much nicer now if you have a disability, right? Like you, uh, you don't, you don't say retarded anymore. You don't have a face now, retarded. Which is fine. I mean, that's fine. I don't have to say retarded. I'm fine. I'm not saying it, but uh, I just don't know what else I'm supposed to say. Like, I don't know what the new word is yet. I haven't really. I heard like three different ones, and I don't want to say. So they just gotta find the new, you know, the new nice word. Cause you know, this is the thing that's kind of stupid about this. The, the old name for retarded, I don't know if you know this, was moron. Yeah. That's a, moron's a medical doctor, and it's still in medical books. Based on your IQ, you are scientifically a moron. Did you know that? You used to call them moron. I mean, can you imagine that? Like in the 30s, you, you have a child with a disability. I'm very sorry, ma'am, your, your child's a moron. And, uh, there's no, we have no medicine to cure. More autism at this time, so yeah. And then eventually people got a little nicer, and you're like, "Come on, dude, have some class and call them retards. <laughs> Stop being so insensitive. <laughs> Just be cool." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my mom says a lot of dumb shit. I'll be honest with you. It's an endless stream of, you know, just like old wives' tales and, and moms. I mean, she's from America. That's the thing, like. She says dumb, sh dumb shit, and she's American. Like, if your if your parents aren't from here, but you were born in America, but you got foreign parents, my heart really goes out to you because you just must listen to some stupid, primitive shit every day of your life talking about it. just the dumbest nonsense. And like you live here, so you're smart, and like you don't want to talk back to them because you love your parents, right? And they came to this country uh, after either escaping from or committing an atrocity of some kind. And, you know? 
like this one. Like all those, you know, those like Chinese kids that are like, they, they go to like Doogie Howser, they just get into college when they're 15. <laughs> They'll have on the news like they're geniuses, and the kid's like, I'm not, I just study a lot, that's all. This is like sitting here like, I, I don't understand what you're saying, genius talk. I don't. Because their parents are crazy hard on them, you know? Like Tiger, remember Tiger Mom? She had that book about, there's all these like foreign parenting books where you're like an animal and you raise your kid really hard. The Tiger Mom, that was like controversial because, uh, you know, remember that? She was like mean to her daughter kind of, I guess, by American standards. Like she couldn't go to sleepovers ever and uh, her mom would call her garbage for not playing piano enough. Which is like, that is like really Chinese, by the way. It's like, it's like really Chinese, listen, you do not have to play piano. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Just tell your parents, nobody gives a shit how well you... I've never once in my whole life been like, you know what would be great if I could listen to a, a miserable Chinese child play old white people music right now. That would really... Just tell your parents to fuck off with that piano shit. Nobody cares. You know? But at least she's in a book is being honest about how she was raising her kid. You know what I mean? Like, if my mom wrote a book, it would be called, I don't remember that! do that. You kids make things up. The book. That'd be my mom's goddamn book. She called me all kinds of worse stuff than garbage, and I can't play piano as a result, man. <laughs> that abuse. I, just, I don't even have kids. I just have a dog, you know? You got a dog? Ah, oh, well, it's nice, man. I got, I, I take him to the dog park in New York sometimes. And, and, uh, it's like an enclosed area you just bring your dog to, you know? And uh, let him off his leash, and he can run around a little bit, and you just relax on a bench, and like just watch him get raped for like 40 minutes. <laughs> for 40 long minutes, every dog in that park just rapes my dog. Like, <laughs> dude, it's crazy. They just drop whatever they're doing and just charge at my dog, and like they don't even find a hole, dude. Not even they just jam lipsticks all over. Like a, he's at the counter at Sephora, just. <laughs> Yeah, like they heard my dog was a snitch before we got to the park. That's the level of aggressive dog rape going on here, okay? And good luck prosecuting that kind of rape. Good luck. You can't even get the owners to stop it. They, they, they just stand there like nothing's happening. This collection of Joe Paternos, basically, just stands there. Yeah, that's the best comparison. That's the best thing I can compare it to. The level of not taking action. Yeah. Hey, quit horsing around. I don't know, what do you want? Get away from me. Football, what do you want? <laughs> I know, people, people always yell too soon when I say that. Yeah. I'm like, it can't. I mean, really, it's too late, is the... <laughs> the issue... <laughs> the issue is that... Like, too soon is if I was doing a joke about it like two weeks before it happened. I mean, like, why are you making sure, like, go tell the cops, why are you? It's way too soon in the... Yeah. Joe, did anybody go to Penn State? Yeah? Did you, now, did you like Joe? Because he was pretty beloved there, old Joe Pa. Which, by the way, Joe Pa, is that just such the nickname of a relative that wouldn't help you if you got molested? Like, it's like a classic sounding... Like if you watch Intervention, they always have like a Joe Pa guy. And I told my Joe Pa what happened, but he said, rush up for supper. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta cut Joe Pa a little slack, I say. A little bit, okay? Just because that guy was really old, you know? He was from the greatest generation. You know what that is? The greatest generation. They're the, they, serve, they live through the Depression, like really old people, they fought in World War II, you know? They're called the greatest generation because they were great. They were great at everything except reporting rapes. Like, <laughs> you can't be great at everything, you know? It's like, they're very strong in some areas. Just not reporting sexual abuse or uh, treating brown people like humans. Those two, those two things, two things are not that great. <laughs> and the other guy, the red-headed guy that walked in on Sandusky in the shower, with a boy, his name is McQueary, which is like, that's like, that's also sad, like how hilarious the names are. Like, 
<laughs> it's sad for redheads. This hasn't been a good couple of years for redheads. It's been sad. I said, cut McQueary some slack, okay? Because that guy stopped a, a, an attack in a shower, a sexual attack. He stopped it using only his gross red hair and bleach white skin. That's all he had. He just had his horrific features to kill that guy's boner. Okay? I mean, talk about doing the best you can. Serenity prayer, etc. Yeah. No, put yourself in that position, dude. Imagine you're a, a popular football coach trying to teach a disadvantaged boy how to wash himself properly. You look up, what do you see? Some orange eyelash, subterranean freckle puss, just... Some half man, half clown just staring at you, stuttering. Blotchy in one side of his neck like those people do. Oh my god, no way I can finish, dude. No way. I apologize for a lot. I apologize for a lot. I apologize for most of Especially the redheads, because that's really, I mean, that's like the last acceptable racism. To, you can't mock anybody else for the color of their skin except for redheads, right? You call them gingers. It's basically just the N-word with the letters kind of switched up. It's, kind of, it's totally fine to say it all you want. Because they're skin. That's why you call them a name. Yeah. And you're not going to stop. I mean, well, you're not going to stop, right? You're not going to stop saying midget ever, probably. You know, why is it? Why those two groups out of everybody? Because I'll tell you why. Those are the only two... Not, I'm not, they're not races, but they're not, I just don't know a better word, but they're like the only two races, if you will, that don't have their own restaurant. And there you go. It's, it's, it's that simple. Like that, that is how you get your respect, ultimately. Is having some kind of food that people can have delivered. What are, you, what, are you, what are you gonna get in a midget restaurant? Like what? What do you think? What are you gonna say? Sliders or something? Somebody, what are your racist jokes about their tiny food? Oh, baby carrots and corn. Ha ha. I'm sorry. I cannot apologize enough for these. And also, all this rape talk, by the way. I don't want you to get the wrong idea that, uh, you know, I just throw rape around like it's a big joke. I'm not one of these rape guys, you know, that, uh, I'm not like that, all right? It's not a, I know in my adult life, I, and this is totally true, I know a lot of women that have been raped, like a shocking, it would shock you how many women get raped, you know what I mean? I know a lot, dude, and, and I know that sounds suspicious, but I swear to God, it's just because I do drugs, that's the only reason. That's how you meet people that got raped. You're doing a lot of drugs. That's really tell you. Which is weird. I mean, people are under, you know, you all mess, people tell you all kinds of terrible stories. They're always shocked, like, really? That's why you're doing this? Like, I was just bored. That's why. <laughs> so this really does cure everything. It's uh... <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a sad world. What do you want? <laughs> Let me tell you. So, you're fighting all the time. I just went, I just went, I've been going a lot more places. There's some things that you didn't appreciate about America, okay? What's great about America. One, it might seem like a small thing, uh, we have the best Christmas. Do you, you, you ever uh, go to like Europe and see their weirdo, their Christmas was invented? <laughs> their creepy ass Christmas that you wouldn't even recognize? They just do Christmas, or like, it's not, it's not that or something with like dots on it. You know? Like, what happens on Christmas? <laughs> Santa Claus puts plums in your shoes! <laughs> Is that if I'm good or bad? Why would I... Why on earth would I have that? Yeah. Gross. And, uh, this other thing that Europeans and New Zealanders have and Australians we, like, we have a letter Z here in the alphabet, 
and uh, they have a letter Z. It's called Z. You know that? I got in an argument with an Australian who was telling me we're, we're weird because Z is not a Z here. Yeah, we're the weird ones with that. So let me get this straight. All the all the letters in the alphabet are just letters, except the last one, which is a dude's name. That's the we're the weird ones. What if, what if your name is Zed? How do you spell that? Uh, it, it's Zed. Uh, Zed. Zed. There's two Zeds in it. E. Dennis. The last letter is Dennis. And uh, this is, this is kind of weird, but I feel like America has the best racism. You know, does that make sense? Like, it's the best racism. Like, cause, it, it, like, we have just the basic decency to be racist against people who look different than us. You understand how advanced that is compared to the rest of the world? There's these countries that are just killing each other, and you can't tell none of them apart. And they're just murdering each other with machetes. And you're just like, what the hell? Guys, what are you doing? Like, listen, why are you doing this? You, you're bo both not American. You don't matter. Don't worry about it. What are you fighting about? Like, who cares who runs your nation's cabbage mines? It's not important. You want some sneakers? Some American sneakers? There you go. You know? That's what I say to my girls, Israeli. I'm like, why? Why do Jews have to fight with the Arabs all the time? Like, shouldn't they just be able to bond uh, based on their mutual irrational fear of delicious meats? <laughs> <Isn't that> a... <laughs> you can't also eat bacon for no reason? Get the fuck out! <laughs> you like horrible techno music too? Why did we not hung out? <laughs> yeah. To, uh... <laughs> These jokes are stupid. <laughs> Me. Is, that? is that you too coming in at the No, let it play out, man. We'll just wait. Are you gonna get it or turn it off or just Do you want me to sing along with it or what are, where, what are we doing here? We turned it off. Oh, Alright, fair enough. Sorry about you all here. I'm having a rough time, you know? Just things are, uh, I don't know. I mean, not the, is the economy bad for you? How is it? Is it hard? I don't know, I don't have a job, so. <laughs> this whole thing was a very lateral move for me. I, didn't, I used to live in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and I had three towels, I had uh, two towels, two towels. One to jerk off in, and one to use as a towel. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yes, sometimes I came out of the shower and realized too late I made the wrong. Sure, sure, that happened a lot. I got three towels now, okay? But it's still like a 50 50. <laughs> it's still, I don't, I don't really break out my towels right, I'll be honest with you. But I try to read about the economy, you know, to figure it out, to not be dumb for a second. And here's how I think it works, or why I think it's like this. Do you, you ever play Monopoly with your family and been in charge of the bank, the Monopoly bank, and uh, not stolen money out of the bank? <laughs> Anyone in here, have you ever played Monopoly one time and not taken money out of that bank? Yeah. Yeah. Who, how many people? You? You? All right, two of you out of the entire room. <laughs> didn't steal, and not even because you're a bad person, okay? It's not even like that. Like, you just got a little behind on, uh, you know, Ventnor Avenue or whatever, okay? Your sister's being a dick. You don't, you don't want her to win, so you just slip a little. You're like, oh, I had a 500 on the board I didn't even know about. But you were going to put it back. You were totally going to put it back. After you pass go, you were totally going to put that money back. Just things got out of hand. Okay, so if that's what you would do, most of you, you would do that to your own family for toy money, for not even real money. You would step over your own mother for orange 500s. That's what you would do by your own admission. Imagine it's a real bank 
with real money and you're playing against strangers that you don't give a fuck about. How well do you think you do with that decision? And that is how the economy works. And that is the simplest way I can say it. While you pay your bill. Yeah. Well, sorry for the one big nuance in this set. Alright. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I don't know. I'm 35 now, which is, uh, I don't think that's old. Okay? But it is the puberty of getting old. That is what that is. Okay? It's like a very scary time in your life where your body is going through a lot of changes. Like I had this one long white hair just come out of the side of my ear yesterday. It was this long. Like it got that long before I even noticed that. Like, am I going to die? Am I dying from that? Like what is that? You know, it's not like original puberty when you, you know, you're like, I have hair in funny places and I can't stop touching myself. Am I gonna die? Am I dying? And you're like, no, that's just puberty. Here, have a Judy Blume book and here. Judy Bloom your problems away. Hey. Black people they give you Judy what do they give you for puberty? Do you have to have Judy Bloom or they don't make you watch Precious, do they? Because that, that, that is not cool. That is not cool if that's how it is. Did you see Precious? No? Did you see uh, the human centipede? That's like the our Precious. <laughs> our hard to watch movie that's just for white people. You didn't see it? My buddy was just at an after party for, uh, he was working on this show called Hip Hop Squares. And uh, the after party, the girl that played Precious was there. And he wanted to go up to her and like, you know, say, hey, what's up? I like you in like Tower Heist, you know, whatever you say. And uh, he wanted to really bad, but he was afraid to, just in case it wasn't Precious. <laughs> That's how bad it is to be Precious. We never should have made that movie. Honestly, God, what's the point of that movie? Who are you helping with that? <laughs> Not girls that look like precious, they didn't get no help out of that. Did you see it now? No, you should, man. Like, honestly, it's just, I think it has a kind of important message, uh, which is be attractive. Like, do something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's not, I, I don't think that, because let me tell you, all that happened from Precious is now, if you piss me off and look like Precious, I will call you Precious. Like, I don't have no, I don't have any moral problem doing that to somebody. You know, and that's like, that's not cool if they're like bigger, you know, don't you remember, you're pretty white dude, remember when you had like a big bitch going like this? Or, oh, like, don't come in my student loan office and... Shut up, Precious, you Precious ass bitch, shut up. That's not nice. I called this lady White Precious like uh, two months ago. I called her White Precious. And she was very surprised by that. Like, she, she thought she couldn't get called Precious because she was white. Bam, White Precious. Because we were fighting over a cab. That's the other thing in New York. You can't get a cab, man. It's just, there's a cab shortage. Sometimes, even using all of my whiteness, I cannot. My maximum whiteness, I just. Uh, they just drive right by me with whiter people, I guess, than me. That's all I can, like gingers and albinos laughing at me. Sometimes you, gotta, you have to fist fight. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens sooner or later. You fist fight for a cab, okay? And uh, the last time I had a fist fight, I was coming. I went to go see Shrek, the movie Shrek. <laughs> I remember it like, vividly. And uh, I'm coming. And by the way, this is the other thing. What new lesson did Precious teach us that we didn't already learn from Shrek? That's just another thing. I'm not saying that she looks like Shrek. That's not at all the joke I'm making. Not my joke. What I'm saying is. Both Shrek and Precious have the same exact like moral of the story. They do. Like the same thing you always hear in every movie. No matter what you look like on the outside, a man of color is willing to get you pregnant. And 
sure. Sure, that's true, but keep making movies. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna let's all pretend we're not in Philadelphia and I don't know exactly. Just pretend I didn't live here for a while and know exactly how it works. Uh, but yeah, I got a fight. This guy ran up to my cab, jumps, as I'm about to get in, jumps into the back seat and starts, steals my cab and then starts laughing at me and pointing. He's just pointing at me and laughing from the back seat. So I just punch him through the fucking window. And uh, guess what? The cab driver doesn't do shit. They don't care. You can go for it. If they... <laughs> Punch someone in the gate, do it. That's my advice. But then sometimes your driver fights a guy with you in the cab. Did you ever have that? Your driver just takes a detour to fuck somebody up and you gotta just be cool. And some guy cut my driver off, so he sped through all these red lights to catch up to the other guy. Then he leans out of his window and starts spitting on the guy's windshield and hitting it. And then I caught eyes uh, with, with the other other passenger of the other cab. And we were like, oh shit, do we have to fly? So, no. It's terrifying to live there. Anyway, I'm like a half hour late for something, okay? Uh, I'm getting desperate, I can't find a cab. I finally see one cab, there's White Precious getting my cab. Okay? But I, I, I wouldn't call her White Precious for that. She got a fair and square, that's not what it is. I went up to her, I go, excuse me miss, I'm running late for something, I'm really desperate. Do you think we could share this cab? Like, I'll pay for your ride wherever you gotta go. I don't care, I just gotta get where I'm going, okay? This is her exact reaction. Oh my God, get away from me! Get away! Help! Help! <laughs> Like if you were being sexually assaulted in broad daylight, how you should yell. And I didn't call the white precious for that either, okay? The first thing I did was check to see if my dick was out. That was my first, and I'm a reasonable man, okay? You know what, maybe my dick is on the outside of my pants. And that is why everyone's all, you know, like, Miss, please, I'm desperate. <laughs> Going all the way, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It was in my pants. So I go, shut up, white precious. Nobody's coming to you in a sexual way. What am I, your dad? <laughs> that's, that's a quote. That's a quote from me to white precious. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> and, uh, and she goes, if you don't stop harassing me, I'm going to call the cops. And I go, call a cop right now. Call a, I want to see a cop's face when you tell him that someone attempted to scale and rape you. I want, you to, I want him to write that as evidence. And I want to go to a trial and have a jury actually listen to that. That's what I want to happen. Call, call a cop, call a cop. Uh, so then she called the cops. And then it got, then it got a little bit real because, you know, I don't know if you ever heard somebody describing you to the cops over the phone in front of you. But it's like, it's scary, kind of, because you, you know how much you stick out if they want to get you. <laughs> like, he's very tall, he has very strange eyebrows, <laughs> he has a blue gym bag. And she said, blue gym bag. I was like, oh shit, because like, I just bought literally all my weed for the month. Before. That's why I, I was late, because I was getting a month, a month supply of weed. So, uh, listen, I don't know what your month is like, but... No cop is gonna believe that's just for me. There's no chance of that. Okay, I can't be out assaulting white preciouses with all this. I bet stunk. I mean, I don't even know how I forgot I had that when I started this. Like, dumbass. So one second, I'm all cocky. Like, yeah, bitch, get a cop. Oh, God, weed. And I just ran. <laughs> I hit out at Dwayne Reed for like 20 minutes there, you know? You know, so. I don't know. The moral of the story is, you don't have to be nice to people, but just don't have illegal shit on you. you know? <laughs> That's the best way I can put it to you. Just do it. That's just terrible that you applaud that story. That's just outright terrible. Um, do you, <laughs> do you guys, hey, by the way, when I was talking about bullying before, did you, did you think, I wasn't talking about gay teens, did you guys think that, like, I, I hope not that you, that you thought I was in any way laughing about gay teen, the, the most precious <laughs> snowflakes of all the teams. I would never, I wouldn't even poke a gay team on the side of my arm unless they pop like a bubble and 
we lose, then that's Perez Hilton. I would never... <laughs> you know, I didn't come out of the closet when I was in college for fucking pussy. You know that? I just I don't understand the pain of coming out of the closet. I do the same exact thing. Because I was real... I used to be a minister. I used to be a Christian minister. And, uh... Yeah. I was Jehovah's Witness. I was Jehovah's Witness. And, uh... You know, they're pretty hardcore. Like, I used to knock on doors to talk about Jesus when I was six. At a, at a stranger's house. You know, I mean, you have a dolly, it was just like they sent a sexual but It still kind of sounds dangerous when I think about it, like just going to a stranger, you know. But you don't really hear about Jehovah's Witnesses getting grabbed up like that. You don't. You know, because nobody wants to talk to Jehovah's Witnesses. Not like, <laughs> even a psychopath, where like a severed human head will hide behind his couch. <laughs> Do you think they're still out there? Why? So that's really inconsiderate of people to. <laughs> but uh, but we didn't, they didn't believe in hell. That's one thing. Like I didn't have the threat of hell. Like they don't believe in hell. So that's kind of good, you know. But I don't. Do you believe in hell? Somebody must. Need. Like I've always been told that you, God doesn't send you to hell. You you choose to go to hell basically because God gives you free will. God loves you, and He gives you free will so you can do the right thing or not. You know. It's like, uh, it's like if I go, like, um, give me your wallet, I'm gonna shoot you in the face. I'm giving you a free choice. Because I love you, like. I don't wanna shoot you in the face, like I hope you'll give me your wallet. Like, I, I hope you do the right thing. Oh, also, you just have to take my word for it that I have a gun, you know? <laughs> you know, just to, on faith believe I have a gun. By the way, if God is really just and real, don't you think he would just send my penis to hell? Like just my penis, not me, just my penis itself. Because honestly, like, you know, if you look like when you die and you have to look at that tape of your life with Jesus or whatever you do, like, if you edit out all the stuff I did with my penis, like, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not a bad guy at all. If you just cut out, the dick stuff out of the tape. I'm not, I deserve to be in heaven. Just to, I just be in heaven all dickless and glorious. Like, well, you should have listened, penis. Instead of telling people what to do all the time. I didn't want to do that inside the American Apparel dressing room. I didn't want to whip it out. You know? That's a little bit of American Apparel's fault too though, honestly, isn't it? They put porno in the dressing room. They put, it's like Polaroids of girls like spread eagle with John, like they're daring you to crank one out. <laughs> like, are you sure about this, American Apparel? Like, yeah, bro, why do you think we have this porno here? Like, go for it. And so I go, I go, I, I get a ticket, I'll be ruining five items today. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't see But, uh, but this, the real thing, like, I had to come out of the because in the Bible, if you're not married and you have heterosexual sex, that's as bad as being gay. You know that, right? Yeah. Like, if you're straight, you think you're better. In God's eyes, you're not at all. Like, that's the same. Like, if you just have missionary position vanilla sex with someone you're not married to, you might as well shit on her tits in the eyes of the Lord. You might as well take a fat dump on her, on her, yeah. That's how, it's not my policy, it's God's policy. I don't, I don't think that, but, so, I was, I was going to school here at Art Institute, I had to come out of the closet to my mother that I was fucking pussy, and uh, I gotta be honest with you, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> my whole family was gonna cut me off like, like I was gay, like how they, people's families did, I was gonna have the same thing, and it was really not that hard for me. Because, let's face it, if you're into it, pussy is so much better than your family. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's not even a contest. Like, I had to think about that for like five minutes. Like, well, my mom's a good cook, but like, pussy. So just think of your mom, your annoying mom, and then pussy. It's not even a... Like, hey, I'm out, bitch. Fist pump, jersey, click. That's how I... <laughs> so if I was gay, I, I would just do this thing, just switch it out. Same thing. But gay, you know? I called my dad at work. Uh, let me call this asshole up right now and tell him what I'm into. And, uh, 
I have someone I have someone I love just like dip their balls in my face just to like for like strength, like just to remind me why this is worth it. You know? I'm like, bro, give me some Oakleys right now. I, I mean, if I was gay, that's how I talk, I'd say bro a lot. I mean, get some Oakleys on my face. Like, hey dad! I don't even remember why I called you right now because I got balls on my face. It's so worth it. It's so much better than you and everything you've ever done or said, including give me life. Including give me life. Tell grandma I said go fuck herself. Click. You live in America. Tell your parents to go fuck themselves if they don't like it. It's so easy. You don't live in fucking Egypt or something. Like, Yeah. We get, well, we have gay marriage in New York, by the way. Do you have that in Philly? No. Really? I'm all for it, by the way. I'm all for it. Because just the very simple reason that I'm straight and I don't give a shit. Like, I don't even understand how it's a thing. Like, but if I was gay, I would never be into that. Honestly, I would never protest for it. I would never help make that happen. I would, if I was gay, I would never get married. Are you kidding me? I would never get married if I was gay. And this is going to sound a little bit immature. But I'm just not, just not that type of dude that like could settle for like just one dude's butt the rest of my life. Like, sorry, I mean, it, you know, I know it's not how you're supposed to feel about it. You're supposed to like want the one true and like, one butt that you love and whatever. Right? This whiny dude say, why don't you want to just be with me, bro? And you're like, I'm a man, that's why. We're hunters, like, that's what we do. I can't even settle on a TV channel, let alone one butt my whole, that's all I get from now on. Even if I met my gay soulmate, which is when you meet a dude that looks exactly like you. <laughs> you see twin gay guys like I pray you find a love like that, but it's not enough for me. By the way, you know what's so ignorant about that joke? Uh, all that anal talk. Because I, mean, I don't know. Do you know any gay people? Do you know a lot? I know a lot of gay people. So ask him. Ask the gay guy. They, they don't do all this anal that everybody thinks they do. That's like that's the big complaint about there's all this wrong hole usage that makes Jesus cry, right? <laughs> so everybody's all mad about that's not the right hole. Right? That's your big problem. But they don't, I've been told at least half, maybe more of all gay guys don't do any anal anything. Did you know that? No. Nope. No. No. Just oral and hand jobs and just middle school boring girl shit. It's shocking. It's shocking. And a little bit disappointing, to be honest with you. I thought, uh, I was led to believe they were a lot cooler than that. No anal? What are you shitting me? If I was gay, I wouldn't put up with that shit for two seconds. Like, where's the anal, dude? We're gay. This is what you call gay. Who raised you? I could do this bullshit at football camp. I came here to get gay with somebody. Now break out the scotch. That's I call it. That's another one I tell. It'd be really weird. It'd be, it'd be a weird way. <laughs> no anal. Can you believe that? That's like having Thanksgiving dinner with just mashed potatoes. That's how inhospitable that is. Just sitting there getting plate after plate of mashed potatoes. And, All right, is it turkey coming eventually? Because it's Thanksgiving? And they're like, I just make mashed potatoes. That's all that I'm comfortable making. Yeah, I make them really good. I make them better than a woman could. That's how good. Like, all right, well, I do want that. Okay, that's part of it. But that's not what this holiday is about, ultimately. Right? It's about moist turkey and plenty of it. That's what it's about. Sorry. That joke, that joke ruins both Thanksgiving and sodomy. Yeah. It does. It does. So, oh, also I just, this is the last place, I went to Alaska. I keep going back to Alaska, what a nightmare. Yeah. If you, listen, if you ever have the chance to go to Alaska, go to Hawaii instead. <laughs> Why did people go to Alaska? It's the worst 
Hawaii is beautiful. Hawaii is like the Earth's vagina. That's how I would describe it. Okay? It's the perfect temperature all the time. <laughs> That's, if you, I mean, I'm not a guy that feels white guilt, but you, that you go in that paradise, then you're like, I hope we didn't fuck this up. Like, that's the first feeling you have. Okay? Not Alaska, though. I don't feel, you know, there's no way that was better before we got there. There's not a chance in hell. They were eating fish ice cream and shit before we got there. Trust me. Help them going to Alaska. But, uh, this is the worst part. Oh, also it can kill you. The entire state is deadly. Like, all that beautiful scenery you see, that will murder you, okay? Mountains kill you. The tree, the, a moose will kill you. Whatever you name it, you'll die, okay? It's like a personal letter from God that he does not give a shit about you if you live in Alaska. That is his personal... Like, why are you even here? I made this for bears. This is not even... Like, what on earth told you you should be here? See all these bears I put to keep you the fuck out of Alaska? <laughs> and there's not enough women. That's the other thing. I was in Anchorage, Alaska. It was like an 8 to 1 male to female ratio. 8 to 1! And that 1 ain't good. You don't want that 1. Okay? She's, she's at least 300 pounds and, and uh, has a sled dog name, like Blue or Balto or something. That's like everything. It's unbelievable. And by the way, I'm not anti, I don't, I'm not anti-fat chick at all, I hope that's not how I'm coming across because my not fat chick, I'm not anti-fat chick, I'm, I'm, fat girl, I'm, I'm not, I'm not above any fat girl, like, my numbers are pretty clear that I'm pro, pro fat girl. <laughs> I think if you look at the record, you'll see that, uh, I'm pretty cool, but, don't act like you're too good for me now, fatso, because it's Alaska, I don't like that little switcheroo, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna be like an $11 airport whopper. Like, I know how much a whopper should be. It's gonna stink because I'm at the airport. The guy, this dude that went on before me made a joke that uh, you would let Brad Pitt harass you at work because he's hot, right? And a 300 pound waitress next to me yells, if Brad Pitt touched my ass, I'd call the police. But she was just enraged at the thought of that. Really, that you call a cop if, if Brad Pitt came down from heaven <laughs> to this frozen dump you live in and actually touched the beanbag chair you call an ass? <laughs> With this beautiful, golden, famous hand, you would call a cop on him? You wouldn't drop to your hammy knees and thank some kind of whale god for the best thing that will ever, ever happen to you in your Alaska life? <laughs> Here's a fun fact about Alaska. They just made it illegal to have sex with animals there last year. Yeah. Yeah. Just got that one on the books. Yeah. Because it was becoming a problem. And if you see the women they have there, I gotta believe a lot of these guys are making an honest mistake. Because it's very dark in Alaska. Hey guys, you all, thank you so much for coming out with some dumb jokes. Keep it going for Kurt Metzger.